Please welcome to the stage Irshad Manji. called a sellout on many occasions, but this one is for the right reasons. <laughs> Thank you all for showing up. Uh, let me start by saying good afternoon, salam, shalom, and to the atheists in the audience, how the hell are you? <laughs> oh yeah. And you know, considering how well Dawkins and Hitchens are doing, I know you atheists are out there. And I have to tell you that Perhaps because I'm a person of deep faith, I have a great deal of respect for many atheists, not the least of whom includes Salman Rushdie. Make that Sir Salman Rushdie. I am, uh, exactly. I am so pleased uh, to be saluting a fellow dissident in the world of Islam this week when he's made the news yet again. And I'm going to share with you a wonderful story about my own encounter with Sir Salman. Uh, and it involves me asking him a question and receiving from his answer among the most profound lessons of my life. But I'm not going to tell you that story just yet. You're going to have to wait a few minutes. Because in order to appreciate why his answer to my question impacted me as much as it did, I, um, I have to know that you grasp the bigger message to which I've devoted myself. And that bigger message can be summed up this My fellow Muslims, we can no longer keep pointing fingers at everybody else, at America, at Israel, at MTV, at a certain point, we have to start taking responsibility for what we are contributing to the crisis in Islam today. And I know, my fellow Muslims, that you will instantly want to accuse me of being un-Islamic, even anti-Islam. Let me humbly remind you, therefore, that Islam's own scripture, the Holy Quran, contains a beautiful passage about taking personal responsibility. And it states, God does not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. Chapter 13, verse 11. We might consider that a 1311 kind of solution to a 911 kind of problem. But now, I want to say to all of you, this message of taking responsibility is hardly limited to Muslims. When you think about it, as I know librarians do think, it has much more universal application, doesn't it? This message applies to anybody who has ever been told you are little more than a victim of the outside world. Women, gays and lesbians, African Americans, Jews, uh, people with disabilities, some Christians, anybody who has ever been conditioned to believe that you can't be held accountable for your choices because guess what? You have no good choices. Well, as a refugee to North America, I say that's a lie. All of us in this part of the world have choices, however flawed they may be. The real question is, do we have the courage to recognize and exercise those choices? And I speak as a student of history when I suggest to you that all of the opportunities my immigrant mother wanted for me and that you've wanted for your children and they'll want for their kids, all of those opportunities have only ever come about because a handful, just a handful of individuals chose to think differently. 
to break sometimes deadly silences, and always, always to risk the disapproval of their own communities. And in many ways, that's the situation in which I find myself as a faithful Muslim who has nonetheless written a book called The Trouble with Islam Today, a book that I readily acknowledge has infuriated the vast majority of my fellow Muslims around the world. I've got 1.3 billion people mad at me. <laughs> oh, sure, I get the biggest laugh from the atheist. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh. Yeah, sure. But you know, that may be more people mad at me than mad at George W. Bush. <laughs> nah, you're right, you're right. He's got me beat by at least a half a billion other folks. You're right. Thank you for making me feel better.